Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to hear and learn the word of truth that's given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast, and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, the saints watching in on the camera, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. This is, uh, what? Deuteronomy chapter 14. This is Deuteronomy chapter 14? This is Deuteronomy, let her in! It's Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 1. Let's see what the book say. Ye are the children of Yahuwah your God. Ye he said, ye are the children of Yahuwah your God. Watch this. Ye shall not cut yourselves nor make any baldness between your eyes for the dead. Right? He said, when somebody die, don't mess around going and cutting yourself or make any baldness in your head for the dead. What else? For you are... A holy people unto the Lord your God, mm -hmm. and the Lord has chosen you to be a peculiar people unto himself above all the nations that are upon the earth. Right. He said you are a holy people, which means you are a set apart people, which means you're distinct and you're different. Right. And he said he set you apart above all the people on the earth. What else? You shall not eat any abominable thing. Right. Then he said you shall not eat any abominable thing let's hear about these abominable things these are the be these are the beasts which you shall eat mm -hmm. the ox we can eat the ox the sheep we can eat the sheep and the goat or oh, the goat that's good the heart we can eat the heart what's and the heart i don't know what a heart is that's like a deer you mm -hmm. know what i'm talking about we can eat something like the deer right and the roebuck the roebuck you know that's like a uh what's the other one you know what I'm you got the Ram. deer R uh, reindeer yeah, you got the rain. You got the deer, and then what's the other one? The uh, the big horn. Oh, sheep. the buck. I don't know. Yeah, like yeah. You yeah. got the deer and the buck. So the roe bucket, the buck. The heart is like the deer. Okay, yeah, okay, the buck. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Keep going. Watch this. We can eat them. And the follow deer. You ever go down south? Somebody say, oh, I got some. I got some deer. Got some. Game. Got some deer meat. Wild game. You know what I'm saying? Some 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 uh venison. some venison. All that. That's good to eat. They come back to you talking about some some rabbit. Well, we got to find out about the rabbit, right? Let's see. And the wild goat, uh huh, and the pe pegarg, uh huh, pegarg, and the wild ox, uh huh, and the cow moys, mm hmm, and every beast that parts the hoof and cleaves the cleft into the cloth, uh huh, and chews the cud amongst the beast, that you shall eat. Chewing the cud, that means you know what I'm saying, kind of digest his food multiple times. You know what I'm saying, it's going to kind of eat and it spit it up and swallow it and spit it up and swallow it and digest the food multiple times. You know what I'm saying? Science say that's a purification process. We don't know. All we know is what the books hold. All right, keep going. Nevertheless, these Sit you up, boy. shall not eat of them that chew the cud or of them that divide the cloven hoof. Uh-huh. As the camel and the hare. Right? I mean, you can't eat no darn camel. Who know what a camel look like? What's interesting about a camel? It has two humps, huh? Or, no, two, two humps. humps yeah. yeah, it got two humps, right? And it got a part in his hoof. When it's talking about, you know what I'm saying, it got the cloven hoof, it's talking about, you know what I'm saying, you know, you know what the hoof is, right? The hoof is a little foot of a, of a horse, you know what I'm saying, or a camel. So it got a little part in the hoof. So the books say, even though it got a part in the hoof, you can't eat it. Why? Because they don't chew the cud. Because you don't chew the cud, right? So we got specific restrictions around what we can eat and what we can't eat. Keep going. Watch this. Nevertheless, these you shall not eat of them that chew the cud or of them that divide the cloven hoof. That's right. As the camel and the hare and the coney, for, the, for they chew the cud but divides not the hoof. Right. So you have the animals that chew the cud, but they don't, they don't, uh, they don't divide the hoof. And what's part of that? Which, which animal is part of that? The hare, right? Mm -hmm. Well, the hare is a rabbit. Right. 
So if 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 a, if, a, if somebody come up and they be like, yeah, I got this deer and I got this rabbit. A lot of people who hunt deer, they also have, have rabbits and raccoons and all that stuff. If they get to bring you some some rabbit and some raccoon, that's what you gotta tell them. Um, that thing unclean for me. For me, you know what I'm For a Hebrew, that's unclean. Right? Somebody who keeps the law, that's unclean. You do what you want. That's your business. You know what I'm saying? I'm just talking about for me, that's unclean for me. All right? Let's see. Keep going. <clears throat> for they chew the cud, but divide not the hoof. Therefore, they are unclean to you. Mm-hmm. And the swine. Look what he said. Therefore, they are, they are unclean to everybody. Unto you. The book say to you. This stuff don't make no. Look. For me, because I keep the law, that thing unclean. For anybody who's keeping the law, that's unclean. If you stay clean, you're not keeping the law. You know what I'm saying? If you eat it, you're just not keeping the law. That's just book. There ain't no way around it. Mm. Right? Keep going. And the swine, because it divides the hoof, yet choose not the cud, it is unclean unto you. When they say swine, it's talking about pig. It's talking about pork. Right? Keep going. You shall not eat of their flesh, nor touch their dead carcass. Mm-hmm. These you shall eat of all that are in the waters, and all that have fins and scales you shall eat. Right? Anything with fins and scales in the water, we can eat it. Right? Did I get our cod, the darn tilapia, bass, bass, tilapia, salmon, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? All types of fish. Pollock. What did you say? Sharks? No, no see, sharks, uh, they sharks, don't they don't have scales. They just got skin on them. You know what I'm saying? They got to have fins and they have to have scales. They have to have both of those. Right? Keep going. Watch this. It's okay. Go you know what I'm saying? So if, you, if you're looking for fins and scales, that means that gets your crab legs, your darn lobster tails, your darn catfish, catfish, all that. They don't, they don't have both of them. So that, that stuff, that would be unclean for us. Right? Go sit on the couch. Max said he wants some crab legs right now, huh? You gotta be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> Let me see. And the soy, my bad. And you shall not eat of their flesh nor touch their dead carcass. Mm -hmm. These you shall eat of all that are in the waters. All that have fins and scales shall you eat. Mm -hmm. Whatsoever it has not fins and scales, you may not eat. Mm -hmm. It is unclean unto you. <clears throat> of all clean birds you shall eat. But these are they of which you shall not eat. Mm -hmm. The eagle. The ostrich. Right? So of all clean birds you can eat. But these are they of which that you cannot eat. You can't eat no eagle. You and can't I, go walking out and get the ostrich. You know, you people, there's some people. Ossifrage, whatever. There's a lot of people that get the ostrich eggs. They crack the ostrich egg. You ever seen the ostrich egg? Them big old egg. Yeah, they get these big old eggs. They crack them and cook them. That's not, that's not clean for us. All right? Keep going. The ossifrage mm -hmm. and the osprey mm -hmm. and the gleed mm -hmm. and the, the kite. These are all different types of birds. And the vulture after his kind. Who would mm -hmm. eat a vulture? Ugh. And every raven after his kind. And the owl. And the night hawk. And the cuckoo. Mm -hmm. And the hawk after his kind. Mm -hmm. and the little owl. And the great owl. And the swan. Mm -hmm. And the pelican. And the gear eagle. And the cormorant. Mm -hmm. And the stork. And the heron after her kind. And the lapwig. And the bat. Mm -hmm. And every creeping thing that flies is unclean unto you. They right. shall not be eaten. So every creeping thing that's fly, that flies is unclean unto you. You can't eat it. So if you know what I'm saying, if you got just real hungry and you just saw like, when they say creepy thing, it's talking about bugs. You know what I'm saying? So you just saw a bumblebee flying by. You know what I'm saying? Let's, let's, just, say, let's just say you digging inside of the honey of the bumblebee and it's a, bum, it's a bee right there in the, in, the, in the honey. You know what I'm saying? You getting the, what is it called? What is it called when you get the honey out? You eat the honeycomb. You pulling the honeycomb out. That thing look good. It look like the cereal. You remember the honey? You know what I'm saying? Honey? You know what I'm saying? It look like the darn cereal. You get it, it's like, I'm about to take a bite out of this. But it's a bee stuck in there. It's dead, though. You know what I'm saying? You can just eat it. So you ate it, that thing would be unclean because that's a creeping thing that flies. So any creeping thing that also flies, unclean for us. Any bird that we just named, unclean for us. You know what I'm saying? So one of the birds that's not named in there, thank the Lord. Good old chicken. You know what I'm talking about? Good old chicken. You know what I'm talking about? That's good. That's fine. That's clean for us. <laughs> Turkey, that clean. I wouldn't. I wouldn't named either. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you can't go out there trying to eat no eagle. You know what I'm saying? Keep going. But of all clean fowls, you may eat. Mm -hmm. You shall not eat of anything that dies of itself, 
you shall give it to the stranger that is in thy gates that he may eat it. Now, look at that. Now, we can't eat something that die of itself. Guess what we can do, though? We can give it to the stranger, even the stranger that's where? Within our gates. That is in our gates. That's law for us. Gates. Right? A lot of people look at these laws and they're looking like, no, I mean, it's that you have to understand. These are laws that are given to Israel. It's given to Israel for the purpose that the Most High God has to separate us amongst the rest of the nations. Right? It's very different from what we're going to read later in the chapters of, of sins that are applicable to all people that he judges all people for. You're not going to read anywhere in this book where he said, I'm going I'm to judge this nation for eating unclean food. You're just not going to read it. It's not a real thing. He gave this to us to take care of our carnal bodies. He's trying to teach us how to be healthy. Right? That was a blessing that he gave to us. Whereas other people, he's judging them for, 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 for breaking other commandments and, 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 and sinning in other ways. Right? Let's see. Keep going. Watch this. Or you may sell it unto the alien, an alien, for you are a holy people unto the Lord your God. You shall not see the kid in his mother's milk. Right? So he said the stranger that's within the gates or a stranger that's without the gates. That would be an alien. Keep going. He said, don't see the, uh, uh, so basically what he's telling you here, read that part again. You shall not see the kid in his mother's milk. So a kid, when you say kid, y'all tell, you, you, you know, a lot of times we talk about children. But no, when we say kid here, it's talking about uh, a baby, baby goat. goat. That's what they call baby goat kids. So that's where it comes from. We start calling people kids. It's a, it comes from the fact that we used to call baby goats kids. So now, I should say we, but they used to call baby goat kids. So now we look at the kid of a goat. He's saying, don't, don't, don't take a baby goat and cook the baby goat. A lot of times we used to cook, um, we used to cook goat inside of milk, all right? So you kind of boil it inside of milk. You cook the meat inside of the milk by boiling it, and then you can serve it that way, right? It's kind of like even when I make my lamb, right? And when I make my lamb, I take goat's milk. And I, it's one of my secrets. Don't y'all tell nobody. You know what I'm saying? You take goat's milk and you let it soak. And you put a lot of stuff in the goat's milk, but you let it soak a little bit. And when it's, it's soaked, you know what I'm saying? Do something, you know what I'm saying? Do something, ah, do something special to the flavor. You know what I'm talking about? So you do that. You know what I'm saying? It's the same thing that we used to do. We used to just boil it. You know what I'm saying? We'll boil it and boil it, boil our goat, and we'll do it in milk. Well, he, what he's telling you is you get the milk from somewhere. Where do you get goat's milk from? What kind of goat? A male goat or a female goat? You get it from a female goat, right? You should know that, right? When you was a baby, where you got your milk from? That's right. All right, may all all of them. You know what I'm saying? So that's how the female goat is also. You got to kind of, you know, get under there. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm saying? Cats have nipples. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I have nipples, Greg. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Then you just got to milk them. And then you get the milk. So you get the milk from a mother goat. What well, a book is saying, don't take the child, the kid, the baby goat, and put him in his own mama's milk to boil him. Most I got was like, that's not appropriate. Oh, most I got, hey, that's just not appropriate. He said, yeah, that don't make no sense. You don't do that. So he, that's a commandment for us not to do it. Right? Keep going. Thou shalt truly tithe all of the increase of thy seed that, that the field brings forth year by year. Right? So in other words, year by year, you're going to have an increase. Increase means what you had above what you had previously or what you have above what you had previously. So that means every year I have my field and it gives me more crops. It gives me more more uh, stuff for me to go ahead. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and have my grain or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Whatever I'm making. So I would take that grain. And because I have that, what I can do is I consider that increase. So let's say I get 15 sheaves of wheat. Right. I get 15 sheaves of wheat and lay it out. Right. How much do I got to give if I'm tithing 10 percent? Come on, mathematician. <laughs> like five. If I got 15 no, 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 sheaves no. of wheat, Seven, like seven, like six, six and a half. What's 10 percent of 15? One point five. There half. we go. I got to get one and a half sheaves. One and a half. Right. So I take one sheaf because we talk about 10 percent. Right. So you take one sheaf and I take a half a sheaf and that would be me tithing the increase. Right. Because I brought in 15 full sheaves. 
right? So that's what the Most High God is calling for here. He said, you will surely tithe on the increase. So in other words, let's say this is, this is what people, you know what I'm saying, this is where the Christian church gets you, right? So they use the tithe, they ain't even supposed to be using it. But this is where they get you. Let's say last year I had 15 sheaves, right? The whole year I only went through five sheaves. I still have 10 sheaves back there, right? And then let's say this year I pull out of the ground 10 more sheaves. How many sheaves do I have all together? 25. 10, uh, 20. What'd you say? Uh, what'd you say? You say you got 15 left? He only, ate, he only used five. I got 15. I used five. Now you got 10. 10 right? 10. Then I got another 10 20. sheep. 20. How many do I have? 20. I got 20 sheep now. Right? Now what's 10% of 20? Two. 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 So if I tied the increase, how much am I tithing? If I give 10% of the increase, how much am I giving? One. I'm only giving one because my increase was the new 10 that I got. I already had 15, which means I already would have had to give 1.5, right? Then I get another 10. The new already taxed. The new 10 is my increase. So the Christian church, what they'll do a lot of time is they'll get you and they'll have you, they'll have you tie them based off of your salary that you make for the year, the whole year. Be like, oh, well, you know, you just do 10% of your salary. But that don't make sense. If they're going to do it appropriately, it will be 10% of every new check. Right? That's why this country have a hard time with doing a wealth. Well, that, that and the fact that the rich people are wealthy. You know what I'm saying? They don't want to make, they stingy. You know what I'm saying? But that's, that, that would be the problem with a wealth tax. You know what I'm saying? You have a wealth tax, then as long as you had a wealth, you keep retaxing the same amount over and over and over and over and over just because it's like I may not have made any extra money, but I'm still a billionaire. Well, it's like, okay, well, your billion dollars getting taxed. You know what I'm saying? So you just keep on taking away from it, even if you make money or not. That's not the increase. Keep going. Let's see what else. These people should let me run the country, though, because what you should be doing is tax brackets should be based off of, I hope y'all listening. Tax bracket should be based off of your wealth. You know what I'm talking about? Like you should be able to say, here's all my assets, including liquid assets. Liquid assets is what? Cash. Cash, Cash is money. Liquid, you know what I'm saying? Open the door. Hold on. <clears throat> Did somebody open up the door? Did somebody open the door? That's what I'm trying to figure out. I don't know. My, my thing is not loading either. I can see through people. Huh? Yeah, go check and see who that is. Somebody tried to get y'all just all y'all run together, like run right at them. You know, I'm saying? only one of y'all going to end up getting shot. Make sure they ain't my daughter. Or you, male. Everybody else can get shot. Okay. <laughs> All right, so um, if you look at um, if you look at the way they got the tax bracket set up, usually they tax they tax you based off of income. But why would taxing based off of income not really be fair? Yeah, you got a bunch saved. Why? Well, what's another reason why I can't? It might not be fair. The tax on the income. Yeah. <sighs> you probably could. Thank you. Cause uh, you ain't paying like yeah, you got a different amount every time. Like you, you know what I'm saying? Like every, everybody else ain't giving that same amount. Well, what happens is we have a society that's run off of debt, right? So what happens is you could be making a very high income, right? But in order to make that income, maybe you had to take out a student loan, right? And this student loan is a debt, a sizable debt that now you break even. So you make a high income, but most of your check goes to service in the student loan. So really, although you make, let's say $130,000 a year, right? You don't really have enough money. You just scraping two pennies together. So now you're in this new tax bracket as if you're making a lot of money, 
but you really don't have income because you're paying for your house, you're paying for your student loan, you're paying for this, and this is how much money you have to make to survive, right? With the expenses that you have, that's how much money you have to make to survive, right? So that would then put this person in the tax bracket as the same person that has a, that makes $100,000, but he got a, an inheritance and house passed down and all these different things, so he don't have the same level of expenses. And one person, your tax bracket is potentially going to put you in poverty, right? And another person, your tax bracket is fine. It don't hurt you at all. So then if a person were to calculate their wealth, they take all of their assets, including their liquid assets, right? And then hold that up against their debt. And then that would become their net, what's called their net asset. Net worth. Their net worth, right? Your boy ain't liquid at all. Yeah, no, nah, we ain't got no time for dark liquor. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We out here broke. You know what I'm talking about? I got to sell everything I got to have a little. Yeah, just get a little. Get, <laughs> let me get $100 after that. You know what I'm saying? Just give me a little $100. You know what I'm talking about? We out here breaking almost even, right? So you sell everything, and then that's where you are. Well, that should determine your poverty level, right? <laughs> Ma the mass majority of black people, if we were to do that, we are negative or we are bottom of the bucket, like $100, $200. $500 if we're not including the car. Right? So that, that should then determine the tax bracket to say, okay, if you below such and such, you don't even get taxed. I have like 100000 but that thing would get sucked up quick because I don't got nowhere to live. Then <laughs> you would have so to live. the billionaires and trillionaires and all that, they wouldn't be able to play the tax loophole games. Because the only reason they play the tax loophole games is because they make their income erase. So they'll say, hey, if you look at my net income, sure, I made this much in income, but I've taken this much in losses this year. Therefore, it's as if I didn't make anything this year. And really, all they're doing is just playing with numbers and moving stuff here, moving stuff there, making it look like they take a loss. Therefore, they don't have to pay taxes. But if it was based off of their wealth, they'd be like, no, 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 no. Your wealth is your wealth, right? That determines the tax bracket you're in. And then we tax your income for the year based off of your wealth, right? We're not taxing your wealth. We're just taxing whatever you made this year, all right, that percentage. We're not deducting anything that you lost this year, right? It's just strictly based off of what your wealth is and what your, your income was. That is fair. But these people don't want to be fair. You know what they want to be? Rich. That's how it works. Anyway, keep going. And you shall eat. Maybe I should run for council. <laughs> <laughs> and thou shalt eat before the Lord thy God in the place which you shall choose, which he shall choose to place his name there. Mm -hmm. And tithe of your corn, of your wine, and your oil, and the firstlings of your herds and your flocks, that you may learn to fear the Lord your God always. Mm -hmm. And if the way be too long for you, mm -hmm. so that you are not able to carry it, or if the place be too far from you, which the Lord your God shall choose to set his name there, when the Lord your God has blessed thee, then shall you turn it into money and bind up the money in thy hand and shall go into the place which the Lord your God shall choose. Mm -hmm. And you shall bestow that money for it. So I'll, I'll probably be that person that like get all my life. I'm not taking all these cows down there. Yeah, yeah, you got to exchange that thing, bring it back. You know what I'm saying? Like, nah, man, here it go. You know what I'm saying? Here it go. Priest probably like that thing. Yeah, buddy. Like, yeah, I can do something with this. I'm tired of eating darn goat. You know what I'm talking about? I'm tired of eating darn you know what I'm saying? My son need a PS5. You know what I'm saying? What you talking about? You gonna hand me a goat? And you shall bestow that money for whatsoever your soul lusts after, for oxen, or for sheep, mm -hmm. or for wine, or for strong drink, or for whatsoever your soul desires. Mm -hmm. And you shall eat there before the Lord thy God, and thou shalt rejoice, you and your household. Mm -hmm. And the Levite that is within your gates, you shall not forsake him, mm -hmm. for he has no part nor inheritance with thee. At the end of three years, you shall bring forth all, all the tithe of thine increase the same year and shall lay it up within thy gates. And the Levite, because he has no part nor inheritance with you, and the stranger and the fatherless and the widow, which are within thy gates, shall come and shall eat and be established and shall be satisfied that the Lord thy God may bless thee in all the work of your hand, which you do. Right. So when you get the tithes, who does the tithe go to? The priest. It goes to the priest. Who else? Levi. And the Levite, and who else? And the Most High. Oh, let's read it again. 
At the end of three years, you shall bring forth all the tithe of thine increase the same year and shall lay it up within thy gates. Mm -hmm. And the Levite, because he has no inheritance with thee, and the stranger and the fatherless and the widow, which are within thy gates, shall come and shall eat and be satisfied. So who eats it? A widow, the fatherless, the Levite, the priest. Right? That's who the tithe go to. 10% from the, from the Levite goes to the priest. But then the rest of it goes to the Levite. And then the fatherless and the widow can eat with the Levite. Why would the fatherless and the widow be the ones that can eat? You don't got nobody to take care of. Right? And our, and now, you know how people, you know what I'm saying, you hear like the feminists now, they're talking about, you know what I'm saying, like we're done with the male patriarchy, you know what I'm saying, this, that, another. Well, that's what they would call it. They would call this a patriarchal, is that a word, patriarchal? Yeah, I don't know. Right? They would call this a patriarch. Right. Where a society where it's run by men. Right. So you would have men as the protectors or the guiders. Right. Of, of the society. So if if you have a fatherless child, that means that they don't have a covering of a man. The side, the, the, the society is not really structured for a woman to be able to take care of that child without a man. Not saying it can't happen, but that's not the proper structure of the society. Right. And the same thing with uh, same thing with a widow. Right. A widow means that she lost her husband. Well, then the society is not structured properly, at least for a woman to be without a man. It's the man that's the covering. It's the man that has the responsibilities, the man that's a protector. It's the man that would have some of the authority there. So basically, the assumption would be that those would make up the poor of the society. Those two groups would make up the poor of the society. Right. So those would be the ones that can't fend for themselves and therefore as poor or the ones who can't fend for themselves, then they are to get the, the ties. So the ties is meant for the poor, generally, the, you know, specifically the, the widows and the fatherless. But the ties is meant for the poor and it's meant for the, um, uh, 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 the fatherless and the, uh, and the widows. All right. And the Levites. Keep going. At the end of every seven years, you shall make a release. And this is the manner of the release. Every creditor that lends out unto his neighbor shall release it. Mm -hmm. He shall not exact it of his neighbor or of his brother, because it is called the Lord's release. Mm -hmm. Of a foreigner, you may exact it again. But that which is, the, that which is yours with your brother, your hand shall release. Mm -hmm. Except, he says, so of our people, we got to release. Right? If somebody owe us something... And it's the year of release. We just got to let that thing go. They don't. We got to wipe their books clean. Right? I loan you some money. You told me you'll give it to me. You know what I'm saying? You'll pay it all back. I'll put you on a loan, right? You pay it back in five years. Right? So you're on a five-year payment plan. You start paying and you start paying it. Then the year of release come up in two years. You still got three years worth of payments left. Year of release come up. What I got to do? Let it go. That thing gone. That thing done. That was my fault. Right? I put you on a five year. You know the year of release coming every seven years. I put you on a five year payment plan. Year of release coming. That's it. That got that. Right? I'll put the no, I only had two more years left. So now you got to eat it if it's our people. However, if it's a stranger, somebody that's not of our people, you can still exact it. Year of release come up be like, no, no, no. You still owe me the, the extra three here. Boy, I don't know what's wrong with you. You ain't know my people. You know what I'm saying? You ain't no darn Hebrew. Yeah, pay me my darn money. What's wrong with you? Right? Keep going. Watch this. Of a foreigner, you may exact it again, but that which is yours with your brother, your hand shall release. Right? So now you have to understand the book says it's one law for who? The one law for the one that dwells in your gates, the stranger and the one that dwells within your gate, the one that's among you. I'm right? Paraphrasing, but yeah. You look at this and you'll see that this is one law for us. The native born. And in the law, it treats them different. It specifies this is for you and this is for you. Unless the law specifies, it applies the same to everybody. But when it specifies, this is how you treat the stranger, this is how you treat this, this is how you treat that. When that specification is there, that's still one law. It ain't like they're getting treated with a different law. It's the same law. The same law just speaking specifically to them and specifically to you. Right? That's important to know. Because once you understand that, then you can know, well, even the law sees us different, right? Sure, it's one law for every, everybody, 
But in that one law, there's provisions for different groups, right? So then if you look at our history, right, the history that's not documented in the book, we go in, we get scattered into Europe, we get scattered into all these places. We, there came a time where there was a question asked from a Gentile that said, should I pray or should I, should, I, should I call the fathers my father even though I'm a Gentile? And a Hebrew, a scholar, a teacher, a Hebrew teacher of the law came back and said, no, 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 you should say it just like us. You should say, even though it ain't your father, you should say it is your father. Right? But that's incorrect teaching. Right? The law, although the law does say it's one law for all, there's different provisions. The law doesn't pretend that the foreigner is the native born. Right? Nor should we. Right? We should say, if not, it's fine if they want to say father, but they should never see themselves as a Hebrew. You're a foreigner that's amongst Hebrews. You're a stranger in the Hebrew land. That's law. That's, that's, and it's fine. It's appropriate. There shouldn't be no shame in that. And we're going to welcome you. But I'm going to exact it when I loan it to you. Now, that's law. How a, if I lose sight of the fact that you that you not a Hebrew, I'm not keeping a law. Books say I had the authority to exact it to you. So now if I try to exact it to you and you be like, no, nah, man, I'm, a, I'm just like a Hebrew. Now you're going to make me feel like I'm in error when really you in error. Right? That type of stuff brings confusion. Let's see. Keep going. These people don't know no law. That's what the problem is. Even the, even the, you know what I'm saying, even the boys, you know what I'm saying, even our fathers that was back in Europe, you know what I'm saying, they got scattered around. You know, a lot of that stuff you got to think that they, they did for politics. You know what I'm saying? You in their land. You just trying to be treated. It's the same thing that people do now. You know what I'm saying? You just trying to be treated nice. You want to make friends with these people. You don't want to be enemies everywhere you go. You know what I'm saying? So you say, no, nah, man, you just like us. Now nah, you welcome, man. You a Hebrew just like us, even though you're not a Hebrew. And then what happened? These people stole your whole identity. Now these people walk around thinking they Hebrew. They foolish. They think they darn Hebrew. Now they believe they, believe they own darn height. And we darn forgot. Everybody just darn stupid. You know what I'm saying? Most of my God looking down like, y'all some idiot. You know what I mean? Don't nobody know what they darn talking about. We sitting there. I, I remember when I first brought it up to my mom. She like, uh-uh, boy, I'm a Gentile. Bragging about it. I feel like I got to look at that and be like, what's wrong with you? You don't even know. Nobody even told. Listen, nobody's proven to you that you a Gentile. Ain't nobody ever came to you with no documentation like, yo, this where you. You don't even know where you come from. Your whole history that they taught you start as a slave out of Africa. Who brought you evidence that you a Gentile? Who proved anything to you? But guess what? I tell you a Hebrew. Guess what? Oh, I got to bring it out. Show me this and show me that. Make somebody show you something. Make somebody show you that you're a Gentile. Make somebody show you that, that an African sold another African. Make somebody show you this stuff. Well, I got to prove everything. Right, but that's how they get us. You know what I'm saying? You grow up, you're comfortable with this thought. Enough people say it. You don't want to buck against the system. So it's like, no, nah, if I'm going to buck against the system, we know why I haven't. If I'm going to buck against the system, give me some evidence. I don't want to look crazy out here. I get it. Well, we got the evidence for you. You know what I'm saying? Look on the website. You know what I'm saying? Look on the YouTube page. The whole bunch of evidence we got for you. All right? Keep going. Let's see. Save when there shall be no poor among you, for the Lord shall greatly bless thee in the land which the Lord God gives thee for an inheritance to possess it. Only if you carefully hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God to observe to do all the commandments which I command you this day. For the Lord your God bless thee as he promised thee. And thou shalt lend unto many nations, but you shall not borrow. Mm -hmm. And you shall reign over many nations, but they shall not reign over you. Mm -hmm. If there be among you a poor man of one of your brethren within any of your gates in the land, which the Lord your God gives thee, mm -hmm. you shall not harden your heart nor shut your hand from thy poor brother. But you shall open your hand wide unto him and shall surely lend him sufficient for his need in that which he wants. Mm -hmm. Beware that there be not a thought in thy wicked heart saying, the seventh year, the year of release is at hand, and your eye be evil against thy poor brother, and you give him not. Right? So he be, he's saying, he's like, look, beware. You know the year of release is coming up. You know what I'm talking about? And he's trying to borrow something from you. And you be like, no, nah, no, nah, you know I ain't going to give it to you now because you ain't going to be able to pay me back before the year of release. And I'm going to lose out on the whole shebang. 
You know what I'm saying? I'm going to have to release it. He said, don't you darn be evil against the, you know what I'm saying? Don't let your eye be evil against your brother. You know what I'm saying? You know the book say an evil eye. That's what he's talking about. You know what I'm saying? Like you thinking about, you looking it over, like trying to look to do something evil. You planning for something evil. You know what I'm saying? You looking for an evil opportunity. You know what I'm saying? That's what the book is talking about when it say an evil eye. Right? He said, don't let your darn eye be evil about that stuff. You better give him that darn money, knowing that you're going to lose it. You know what I'm saying? Year of release coming up. You know what I'm saying? The whole year. You got one year to the year of release. But you know this. You know what I'm saying? You know this dude don't never pay nobody back on time. If you both borrow for a week, he don't never pay you back for about a year. You know you about to lose it. You know what? Book say you got to give it to him. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead. Make sure you pay me back next week now. No, no, I'm paying you back next week. Next week come. No, no, man. I just need, you know what I'm saying? Just give me another week. You know what I'm saying? I got it's still, it's still tied up. All right, man. I'll see, I'll see what you got. A year later, you lost the whole thing. Most of our guys say you just got to walk with that. Most of our guys take care of that stuff, man. You do, you do what you're supposed to do. Most of our guys say stuff ain't the end of the world, man. We taking stuff too serious. Stuff ain't the end of the world. You can take some losses. You know what I'm saying? Most of the losses we take, it really don't be losses anyway. And I ain't, I ain't telling you that like, like one of these, uh, you know what I'm saying? You know how these motivational dudes is. You know what I'm saying? Well, you know what? Uh, I can't stand motivational speech. What they be saying? They be like, uh, you know what I'm saying? Failure is not failure. You know what I'm saying? Failure is just part of the path to success. You know what I'm saying? All that stuff. I ain't talking like that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That stuff is fooling me. No, failure is failure. Failure is failure. You know what I'm saying? Failure is failure. You can learn from your failure. Yeah, you, you might learn something from it, or you just did something stupid and you right. failed. You know what I'm saying? You might not learn a thing. You might learn what you already knew. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know what I'm saying? Failure is just failure. But, you know what I'm saying? A lot of times, losses don't even really be losses. We just, it's just pride for us. You know what I'm saying? We just, we just don't like people feeling a certain way about us and all that stuff. But sometimes, you know what I'm saying? A loss ain't a loss. Sometimes a loss is an investment. You know what I'm saying? It just depends on how you, you know what I'm saying, how you approach the situation and what you're planning out of it. Sometimes, a lot of times, I plan for what looked like a loss. I plan for it. It's like, okay, for sure. I'm going to do this. I'm going to get this. They're going to think they won. They're going to think they got something. That's cool. But really, all I need to do is get the long game. It's just the long game. Sometimes people, listen, at work, sometimes people won't even make a deal with you until they feel like they got over on you. They want it because that it put their guard down. Everybody used to everybody trying to get over on everybody. And so if they don't feel like I can get over on him, they look like, man, that guy's a threat. I'll come in there like I give him the first one. No, 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 no. That's all you. You know what I'm saying? No, what you want my team to do for you? No, we'll take it here. This, that, another. Now they disarm. Now we can have real business. Okay, now that you disarm, this is what I need from you. This is what I can do for you long term. This, that, another. And we make a deal. Right? That person might see. Ah, I got the better of him the first time, right? He don't realize for the long game, we just doing good business. That's it. We just doing good business. So not everything is a loss just because it looked like a loss to people. You know what I'm saying? That's fine. That's fine, man. You know what I'm saying? What's, what's most important is that you make strategic choices and that you make choices that make sense. Everything in this book is strategic, right? If you look at this book, the whole thing is strategic, right? It all just makes sense. That's what we're looking at. You got to make sure that the steps that we make and the way that we order our steps, it makes sense. <clears throat> and we have an end goal in mind. Let's see. Keep going. What, what chapter are we on? 15. 15. Keep going. And you give him not, and he cry unto the Lord against you, and it be sin unto thee. Uh-huh. Thou shalt surely give him, and thine heart shall not be grieved when you give unto him. Yep. He said, when you do it, you better not be sad about it. You know what I'm saying? book. Book, look, book tell you, not only do you give it to him, but when you do give it to him, it better not make you sad. Your heart better not be grieved when you do it, right? Because it's right. It's right to give it to him. Right? Keep going. Because that for this thing, the Lord thy God shall bless thee in all thy works and in all that thou put your hand to do. Mm-hmm. For the poor shall never cease out of the land. Therefore, I command thee, saying, you shall open your hand wide unto thy brother, to thy poor and to thy needy in thy land. So now the book just said the poor shall what? Never cease in the land. So now that's in our law. Do it ever make sense for us to make a prayer to the most High God saying, I want to <laughs> stop poverty. The book said that he, the poor should never cease in the land. All right, keep going. And if thy brother, a Hebrew man or a Hebrew woman, be sold unto thee, 
and serve thee six years, then in the seventh year you shall let him go free from thee. He got to go. And when thou send him out free from thee, thou shalt not let him go away empty. Thou shalt furnish him liberally out of thy flock and out of thy floor and out of thy wine press of that wherewith the Lord thy God has blessed thee, thou shalt give unto him. Right? Where do you think we got that from? Jacob. We got that from Jacob. Remember, Jacob, how long did Jacob have to serve uh, uh, Laban? Laban. He I don't want to say Hiram for some reason. He served him for 14 years, but he did another six. Right? So he did 20 years all together, right? And he tried to leave, get him out of there without nothing. Right? It was, in, it, was, it was Laban's intention to get him out of there without anything. So now there's a law in play, because you remember... Jacob actually he prayed to the most high God and the most high God showed him how to leave out of there with pretty much everything right and so now the most high God put a law in place to say listen not only do you can't keep him past seven years you at the at the end of six years you got to let him go first of all you know what I'm saying unless he want to stay and we don't keep gonna cover that but outside of him wanting to stay you got to let him go at the end of six years and then when you go when he go you got to give him you gotta you gotta hook him up right so what that ends up being is a lot of people see it as like, oh, he served you for six years. Somebody sold him to you. And the way we look at that, because our mind has been warped based off of the mistreatment of this country and the view of slavery in this country and servitude in this country. That's not the case. Right. What this is talking about is more like what we would see as like an apprenticeship. Right. So like, say you, you know, what I'm saying you making your cake pops or whatever. Let's say you got your own business. You making a cake pops. Right. Or you doing whatever you do. Right. But you need help. You need help. So then I say, you know what? Listen, man, I got this servant, you know what I'm saying? This, that, and other. I tell you what, if you give me, you know what I'm saying, $100,000, you know what I'm saying, he can make cake pops for you for the next six years. Right? So then you buy that servant from me. Right? You get it. And then you make a cake pot. And y'all making money, 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 money off of the cake pot. Because now you got two of you. You were making hundreds of thousands of dollars a year based off of your own cake pop. Now this person, hey, man, what you doing, man? Why don't you relax? Go sit over there. Go sit over there. Right? Now, you know what I'm saying? You got somebody else making care of Now you're doubling the output. And along the way, what is he learning how to do? Make cake pops. He yeah. learning how to make cake pops. So now when six years go by, he didn't make any money. But he stayed at your house because that's what we had to do. He ate your food because that's what we had to do. And he learned how to make cake pops. So now when he leave in six years, what can he go do? Make his own. He can make his own cake pop. So now he start up his own cake pop business. You give him some gifts so that he can start up, right? Here, man, take this cake pop maple, you know what I'm saying, this bowl and this mixer. Here, here's a couple boxes of cake. This, that, another, and just a little money, you know what I'm saying? You need to buy you a building, whatever. So you set him up. Now he starts his own thing. What do you think he going to do after a while? Get himself another He going to get an apprentice. Little kid, somebody young, start with me, work with me six years. They learn how to make, and it keeps going, it keeps going. And that's how we learn skills, right? We didn't have a college or a university or we didn't have a trade school. We had these people that needed help with their business. Now, our business was typically crops, right? So you would take this young boy who don't know nothing about crops, but listen, we don't have a crop, right? Because we're poor. Why don't you go work for this person? I will sell you to this person. Now, my mom got money. My dad got money. We don't, we're poor. I'm going to sell my kid to you. It's not like a cruel thing. I'm selling my kid to you so you can teach my kid. Because now, now my kid might leave away from you with some wealth and be able to get a field. Right? And so that was the economy. That's how this stuff worked. I kid you not. It still works this way in Africa with our people. If you go and go to the Igbo land, this is still what they do. I was reading a documentary on it, how the Hebrew, Hebrews, that's how I understood. I was looking like, I looked at it totally differently because I'm looking at what they're still doing in this land right now. And what, just what I described is what they still do. You lend them. I don't think the years is the same. It's different years. But you lend them to somebody because you're poor. You know what I'm saying? So you have people that got some, got some wealth, got some property, got something that they need help with. You lend them. They learn how to make clothes. They learn how to do this. They learn how to do that. You know what I'm saying? And after a certain amount of time, they send them off. They send them off with gifts. You know what I'm saying? And the person go start their own thing and they keep the cycle going. And that's how they, they whole economy run. I was looking like when you look at it like this, like, man, this is the most beautiful thing you ever seen. The ever, most beautiful thing that you ever heard of. The whole the economy that the most high God set up, it feeds everybody. If you pour, you walk through. 
and you pick whatever you want out of the fields. It's law. That's not trespassing like these, these stingy people would have it here. Ain't no trespassing. That's law. Boy, you better keep your food, your, your food available for these people. It's the poor in your darn land. And you know they ain't going to never cease. Right? So open up the door and you make sure people can eat. You said what? No, you can't. That's you know a good what I'm point. No, 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 no. That's a real good point. No, 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 no. I make sure there's always fruit punch available for everybody who come over here. You have fruit punch available to you? What? All right, then that's all I saw. <laughs> you pick out of my field, you pick some darn fruit punch. They, you can't tell them. Hey, hey, hey! <laughs> <laughs> that's right. You know what I'm talking about? You got it. I'm messy. Yeah, well, I appreciate mail. All right? I don't know what's wrong with the rest of y'all. It's, uh... Let's uh, keep going. Let's see what we got. And thou shalt remember that you was a bondman in the land of Egypt, and the mm -hmm. Lord thy God redeemed thee. Therefore, mm -hmm. I command thee this thing today. Mm -hmm. And it shall be, if he say unto thee, I will not go away from thee, because he loves thee. Right, so if the servant house. say, if, look, if the servant say, I don't want to go away from you, because I love you. And what? And, uh, and he loves thee in your house. He loves, I love being here. This is great. I don't want to go. It's been six years. It's time for me to go. But man, I don't want to go. I love it here. Watch this. Because he is well with thee. Uh -huh. then, shall, then thou shalt take an awl and thrust it through his ear unto the, uh, unto the door, and he shall be thy servant forever. Right? So you thrust an awl through his ear. I don't even know what that means. But you know what I'm saying? You, you pretty much pierce his ear through a door. Boom. You know what I'm saying? And what that do is that mark him and say, all right, you've agreed to stay with me forever. So now you're just a part of my family. We can keep this thing going forever. Right? So now this person, let's say they started out poor. They had no wealth. They didn't have nothing that they can kind of scrape together and make. They didn't have nothing that they can scrape together and make happen. Now they're part of this household. They're part of this maybe family. They got a little bit more wealth. They can help them get more money. Everything's cool, and it's just, a, you know, it's, a, it's another economy. So now this person can go get married. They bring them into this house. You know what I'm saying? They grow the family, right? Keep going. And he shall be thy servant forever, and also unto thy maid servant you shall do likewise. Mm -hmm. It shall not seem hard unto thee when, the, when thou send him away from, free from thee, for he has been worth a double hired servant to thee. In serving thee six years, and the Lord thy God shall bless thee in all that you do. Mm -hmm. All the firstling males that come of thy herd and thy flock, thou shalt sanctify unto the Lord your God. You shall do no work with the firstling of thy bullock, nor shear the firstling of thy sheep. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt eat it before the Lord thy God year by year in the place which the Lord shall choose you and your household. And if there be any blemish therein, as if, as if it be lame or blind or have any ill blemish, you shall not sacrifice it unto the Lord thy God. Mm -hmm. You shall eat it within thy gates. The unclean and the clean person shall eat it alike as the roebuck and as the heart. Mm -hmm. Only thou shalt not eat the blood thereof. Thou shalt pour it upon the ground as water. Mm -hmm. Observe the month of Abib and keep the Passover unto the Lord thy God. For mm -hmm. in the month of Abib, the Lord your God brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt by night. Remember, thou, Abib is our first month. All right, keep going. Thou shalt therefore sacrifice the Passover unto the Lord thy God of the flock and of the herd in the place which the Lord shall choose to place his name there. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt eat no leavened bread with it. Seven days thou shalt eat unleavened bread therewith, and even the bread of affliction. For thou came forth out of the land of Egypt in haste, that they, uh, thou may remember the day when you came forth out of the land of Egypt, all the days of thy life. Mm -hmm. And there shall be no leavened bread seen with thee in all thy coasts seven days neither shall there anything of the flesh which thou sacrifice the first day at even remain all night until the morning mm -hmm. thou may not sacrifice the passover within any of thy gates which the lord thy god gives thee but at the place which the lord thy god shall choose to place his name in there thou shalt sacrifice the passover at even at the going down of the sun at the season that thou came forth out of egypt mm -hmm. and thou shalt roast and eat it in the place which the lord thy god shall choose mm -hmm. and thou shalt turn in the morning and go in, go unto thy tents six days thou shalt eat unleavened bread and on the seventh day shall be a solemn assembly to the lord thy god thou shalt do no work therein 
Seven weeks shall thou number unto thee. Begin to number the seven weeks from such time as thou begin to put the sickle up, sickle to the corn. Right. When you talk about the sickle to the corn, he's saying, remember, uh, in the midst of the uh, seven days of unleavened bread, we would then wait until the Sunday and then we would take the, the, the first fruit, our first fruit sheaf waver. So that means we would have to put the sickle to our fields to, to gather the sheaves. You know what I'm saying? The sheaf is basically you taking. So when they say corn, it's talking about whatever the fruit is. And so let's say you have wheat. You'd have a corn of wheat. In order to get to that corn of wheat, you would have to take a sickle, cut all the wheat up out of the ground, bundle it up into a sheaf. Right. So he's saying the first time that you do that would be during the week of unleavened bread. So then you count seven days, or I'm sorry, seven weeks from there. And then it's going to bring you to what? Uh, feast of weeks. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt keep the feast of weeks unto the Lord thy God with the tribute of a free will offering of thine hand, mm -hmm. which thou shalt give unto the Lord thy God according to the Lord thy God has blessed thee. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt rejoice before the Lord thy God, you and your son and your daughter and your maid servant, manservant and your maidservant and the Levite within thy gates. And the stranger, and the fatherless, the widow among you, mm -hmm. and the place which the Lord God chose choose to place his name there. And thou shalt remember that you was a bondman in Egypt, and shall observe to do these statutes. Thou shalt observe the feast of tabernacle seven days, after that thou hast gathered in thy corn and thy wine. And thou shalt rejoice in thy feast, you and your son, and your daughter, and your manservant, and your maidservant, and the Levite, and the stranger, and the fatherless, and the widow that is within your gates. Mm -hmm. Seven days shall you keep the solemn feast unto the Lord thy God in the place which the Lord shall choose, because the Lord thy God shall bless thee in all your increase, and in all the works of your hands. Therefore, you shall surely rejoice. Three times in a year shall all your males appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose, mm -hmm. in the feast of unleavened bread, in the feast of weeks, and the feast of tabernacles, and they shall not appear before the Lord empty. Every man shall give as he is able, according to the blessing of the Lord thy God, which he has given thee. Judges and officers shall you make thee in all your gates, which the Lord thy God gives thee throughout your tribes. And they shall judge the people with, the, with just judgment. Thou shalt not rest judgment. Thou shalt not respect persons, neither take a gift. For a gift does blind the eyes of the wise and pervert the words of the righteous. That which is altogether just shall thou follow. That thou mayest live and in in inherit the land which the Lord thy God gives thee. Thou shalt not plant thee a grove of any trees near unto the altar of the Lord thy God, which thou shalt make thee. Neither shalt thou set up any image which the Lord thy God hates. It's chapter 16. 17. 17. Oh, we moving today. Thou shalt not sacrifice unto the Lord thy God any bullock or sheep wherein is blemished or any evil or any evil favored favoredness mm -hmm. for that is an abomination unto the Lord thy God if there be found among you within any of your gates which the Lord thy God gives thee man or woman that has wrought wickedness in the sight of the Lord thy God and trans transgressing his covenant and has gone and served other gods and worshiped them either the sun or moon or any of the hosts of heaven which I have not commanded and it be told thee and you have heard of it and inquire diligently, and behold, it is true, and the thing is certain that mm -hmm. such an abomination is wrought in Israel. Mm -hmm. Then shalt thou bring forth that man or that woman which have committed that wicked thing unto thy gates, even that man or that woman, and shall stone them with stones till they die. Mm -hmm. At the mouth of two witnesses or three witnesses shall he that is worthy of death be put to death. All right. So all it take is all it take is for two or three people to bring a charge against you. Right. Now, a lot of people look at that and be like, well, as long as two or three people bring a charge to you, that's it. Well, no, you bring two or three people bring a charge against you. If you have two or three people saying the opposite, like, no, nah, he didn't do that. Then it becomes something that the judge has to search out. Right. The judge has to figure it out. Mm -hmm. But if you got two or three people saying something and there's nobody to say that that didn't happen or there's no defense for it. and You ain't got witnesses to defend you. Then on that matter, a man is justly going to die. All right. Keep going. But at the mouth of one witness, he shall not be put to death. Right. If you only got one person saying it, you can't trust that mess. You know what I'm saying? So he shall not be put to death. The hands of the witness shall be first upon him to put him to death. And uh -huh. afterward, the hands of all the people. Uh -huh. So thou shalt put evil away from among you. If there arise a matter too hard for the in judgment between blood and blood, between plea and plea, and between stroke and stroke, 
being matters of controversy within thy gates, uh -huh. then shall thou arise and get thee up into the place which the Lord thy God shall choose. Uh -huh. And thou shalt come unto the priest and Levites and unto the judge that shall be in those days and inquire, and they shall show thee the sentence of judgment. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt do according to the sentence, which they of that place which the Lord shall choose shall show thee, and thou shalt observe to do according to all that they inform thee according to the sentence of the law which they shall teach thee, mm -hmm. and according to the judgment which they shall tell thee, thou shalt do. Thou shalt not decline from the sentence which they shall show thee to the right hand or to the left. And the man that will do presumptuously and will not hearken unto the priest that stands to minister there before the Lord thy God mm -hmm. or unto the judge, even that man shall die, and thou shalt put away the evil from Israel. And all people shall hear and fear and do no more presumptuously. When you are come unto the land which the Lord your God gives thee, and shall possess it, and shall dwell therein, and shall say, I will set a king over me, like as all the nations that are about me, mm -hmm. thou shalt in any wise set him king over thee, whom the Lord thy God shall choose. Right? So if we came to a point where we like, yo, I think we should have a king. Book say, the only way you're going to do it is you set a king over you that Yahuwah shall choose. But notice that this provision is in our law. Right. It's in our law that one day we will want a king. Right. It's important because we're going to get to a point where we actually want a king. Right. So we got to understand where the law plays, what the law commands, how we supposed to handle it. And then we'll be able to judge if we handled it according to the law or not. Keep going. One from among thy brethren shall thou set king over thee. Mm -hmm. Thou may not set a stranger over thee, which is not thy brother. But he shall not multiply horses to himself, nor cause the people to return to Egypt to the end that should multiply horses. Mm -hmm. For as much as the Lord has said unto you, you shall henceforth return no more that way. Mm -hmm. Neither shall he multiply wives to himself that his heart turn not away. Neither shall he greatly multiply to himself silver and gold. Mm -hmm. And it shall be when he sits upon the throne of his kingdom that he shall write him a copy of this law in a book out of that which is before the priest, before the priest, the Levites. And it shall be with him, and he shall read therein all the days of his life, that he may learn to fear the Lord his God, to keep all the words uh, of this law and these statutes to do them, that his heart be not lifted up above his brethren, and that he turn not aside from the commandment to the right hand or to the left, to the end that he may prolong his days in his kingdom, he and his children in the midst of Israel. Mm -hmm. So now we have rules for a king. Rules for establishing the king and then rules for the king once the king is in place. All that's going to end up being very important. Multiplying wives, multiplying uh, horses, silver and gold, silver and gold. All of that is very important. That's those are restrictions that are placed on kings of Israel. Right. So now we'll be able to look and when when we finally get to the time where we start to wanting kings and having kings, we'll be able to see if they follow those restrictions or not and why the most high God has this stuff in place. Right. That's the end? That's the end of 17? 17. Uh, let me see how 18 start. I feel mm -hmm. like we can probably get another chapter, chapter off, but let me see how it starts. The priests and the Levites and all the tribe of Levi shall have no part nor inheritance with Israel. Uh -huh. They shall eat the offerings of the Lord made by fire in his inheritance. Okay, no, no, no. This is going to start off something a little different. So let's, uh, let's, let's end here, but next week we'll kind of read about the Levites, and then we'll try to take it all the way until... Um, until we get to the point where we're talking um, about, you know what I'm saying, laws, about sexual immorality, about um, marriages, about uh, what's next? What's after that? Um, what defiles a person from being into the temple? We'll uh, try to vows. see if we... Huh? No, that's numbers. Yeah, then we'll try to, we'll to kind of get into a few 